I'm John Skinner, and this supplements my book, Fishing the Bucktail. And I'll be fishing with a three-quarter ounce John Skinner SNS Blackfish Porgy jig this trip. Okay, at least once each season, I like to get in on this great run of big porgies that we have in the springtime uh, near where I live. And uh, this time, I'm going to get to use the spot lock feature of the trolling motor. So uh, instead of using an anchor, I'm going to use the trolling motor to hold my position. Um, so I'm just arriving on the grounds. I'm the first one out here. And what I'm going to do is, you know what, porgies, they can be a little bit spooky. So since I've got the trolling motor, I might as well use it. I'm going to shut down uh, a little bit before where I want to be. And then I'm going to drop the trolling motor down and just point in the general direction, put it on autopilot, and aim it at the general area where I'm going to fish while I uh, tidy up a couple things in the boat and get ready to fish. And I think maybe you can see I'm working up uh, along a contour line on the right-hand side of the screen on the plotter. Um, if you look at on the sonar near the bottom, uh, you, know, you can definitely see there's something down there, hopefully some porgies. And uh, hey, certainly this looks like a great place to uh, drop that trolling motor in and uh, you know, work up a little ways along that contour line and, and try to find some fish. And uh, yeah, so this is my second trip with this thing. and. Boy, it was really kind of easy right from the start. Uh, I'm using it in the pretty basic mode. Um, you know, put it down, turn it on, and then use the little micro remote to control it. And uh, there's more complicated things you can do with it because it can be controlled from the fish finder control head. It can run tracks and do all kinds of stuff. You know what? I'm just learning. I'm happy to use it in this mode for now. Uh, yeah, you see this, you know, handful of buttons on there, left, right, faster, slower, on, off, uh, autopilot. And the big button for today is right in the middle is an anchor. So uh, we're going to get to use that in a minute. So I'm tilting my outward motor up for two reasons. One is... Well, you know what? I'm going to be anchoring with the trolling motor. I don't see any sense of having the lower unit down in the water. But also, um, this Humminbird has really high-resolution side imaging scanning. And you know what? I, I, I'm just learning that part, too. And uh, I've read that, depending on how you install a transducer, you know, it's a trans-amount transducer, that the motor could block the signal. So uh, I'm just, for the first time, going to use this and I want to make sure that the motor is not going to interfere with it. As it turns out, later in this trip, and I f didn't video this, I should have, but uh, later in the trip, I was motoring along with the main outboard and the side scan on, and it was in an area where th there's rocks and stuff, and you could see the rocks so beautifully on the side scan. So uh, I'm now confident that I do not need to tilt the motor up in order to have the side scan working, so I'm happy about that. So in the cooler, I've got a half a dozen frozen squid. I got these at Wego Bait and Tackle in Southhold. And I mention that because the stuff is just so high quality. It's fresh, it's really thick and firm, and you're going to see it really stays on the hook beautifully. And I also have a couple of blocks of chum. You're going to see me put that down in uh, basically what are killie pots, uh, I call them chum pots, whatever. And um, yeah, that should get them going. But first, uh, you know what? I'm looking around on my plotter. I want to see where I am in relation to some older marks that I have. Plus, I kind of want to watch that sonar and, um, yeah, figure out where it is I'm going to start. And you know what? I'm going up along that contour line, and I'm going to see enough stuff on the bottom where, hey, I'm going to go ahead, hit that anchor button on the remote, and um, try a spot. All right, I'm seeing some kind of life near the bottom, so uh, it's enough for me to hit that anchor mark. And so it's funny, if you watch the trolling motor 
up front. To me, I thought it was it was like freaking out because it turned around almost 180 degrees. You can see it swinging around and everything. Uh, that's the first time I've ever pushed that anchor button. And now that I think about it, yeah, what it did made perfect sense because when I hit the anchor button, it wanted to stay exactly where I was when I pushed the button. But of course the boat was moving, so it had to go around 180 degrees to stop the boat and then to, to position it precisely where it was that I pushed the button. You can imagine for black fishing and other uh, stuff that requires precision anchoring that, yeah, that, that would really make a big difference. And so I'm keeping my unit on and I'm going to kind of watch it and um, you know, I want to see that GPS read you know, 0.0 and um, also see that I'm not moving at all on the plotter. And yeah, sure enough, it's uh, doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, I'm pointing at I'm pretty happy to see some life on the bottom, and well, let's see if I can get something to eat. All right, I'm definitely seeing life on the fish finder. And uh, so I've put a piece of yellow tape right on the tip of the rod. Hopefully that shows up better on the video so you can actually see the taps. Well, you know, hey, I don't have any chum down yet. I've just basically stopped in a spot. You know, you see that slick on the water? Uh, you know, usually that's some kind of a current break. And I always find that uh, something like that to be a significant piece of structure. Of course, I'm really kind of focused on the bottom structure and the fact that I have uh, marks here on the plotter and um, yeah f and of course looking on the pl on the fish finder to see that I'm seeing some fish but uh, yeah I am pretty close to that slick line on the water and uh, just hoping to get some bites and there we go tap 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 finally something to hit the bait Okay, a decent porgy under normal circumstances, but that's really not quite what I'm aiming for out here. There are some really large ones uh, out here, and, and that's what I'm shooting for. But hey, I'll take it, um, especially since you know I haven't put the chum down yet. I'm just looking for fish, so that that's an okay start and um, not a bad one at all. And, and I, the other times I've done this, I've often noticed that in the very beginning, uh, you tend to get some smaller fish until you really get the chum working. Controller motor is working to keep me here. If I get another one right away, I'm going to put the chum down. There. Chum's going to go down. All right, not great on the size, uh, not terrible either, but you know what, the two fish, boom, boom, good enough uh, for me to try it here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the chum pot ready, put that down. Thank you. 
So I bet I've got uh, easily four pounds, maybe five pounds of lead in this thing. Uh, you, you definitely need to weight it down a little bit because you, you don't want it drifting back into the area you're fishing. You want it to stay down pretty straight. And I'm happy to see even more life on the fish finder now. Uh, and yeah, that's looking really good. You know, I'm going to turn this thing off. Uh, I see no need to keep pounding the bottom with the sonar. Um, it, it can't hurt to turn it off. It could, in theory, hurt to uh, leave it on. So off it goes. Well, so if you're listening to this in headphones, uh, that was pretty interesting, I, or at least for me, because it's the first time I'm using the GoPro 7, and the stereo seems to be really good, because when that boat went behind me, it went from the right side of my head to the left side of my head. So, uh, yeah, if, if you've got headphones on, you know what I mean. So this is a first for me. This is not a porgy. I have only seen these in Florida. This is a pinfish. Uh, why it is up here at this time of year is beyond me. I've never ever caught one up north. Uh, so that was a huge surprise to see that. So you can see there's a fair amount of current. You can see stuff drifting by uh, and the motor is holding uh, the boat just fine. You can barely hear the motor. It's a just a, a very low hum. Uh, yeah, and as you saw, this is 30 feet of water. Three quarters of an ounce is holding fine here. I think I might have been able to get away even with just a little bit lighter, but uh, the three quarter ounce is fine. And I'm using 10 pound test uh, Daiwa J braid eight strand. So it's a, a pretty thin, smooth line. As I mentioned uh, recently, there's some really interesting new lines out there. The Berkeley X9 is one of them, very thin, very smooth. Also, Daiwa J Braid Grand is another really smooth one. All right, here we go. This is one of the better ones. Wow. That's what I was looking for. Wow. All right, yeah, that's one of the big ones. And, uh, and they're going to get bigger still, but this was the first really good one that I got. And, uh, yeah, that that's less than three pounds, but we're going to definitely break three pounds on some of these. And uh, I think this is one of them. Wow. Holy crap. Okay, so this fishing is going to be pretty much nonstop, and <laughs> I can tell you, uh, I could get like an hour out of one squid because it's just cut into small strips. So, uh, yeah, it's um, quite cost effective to do it this way because it stays on the hook so beautifully. And yes, yeah, so here's how I clean them uh, you know, take the head off and strip out the skin, and then you, know, you end up with something that just cuts so beautifully into strips. But again, you need sizable squid that was frozen in a pretty fresh condition uh, for it to be so nice like this. And a couple other details. Uh, a block of chum lasted me about 90 minutes. You know, that's going to have to do also with the water temperature because, uh, yeah, it's cold water and, uh, you know, I've got a frozen block. So it's holding together pretty well in that it's like 54 degree water. Uh, the other thing is, so I'm going to do this, this trip, I'm going to anchor up here for um, for three hours. And on that trolling motor, there's a battery tester where you can, when the trolling motor is off, you can push a button and it will indicate um, 
basically how charged your batteries are. And I can tell you, I got home and I tested it, and it was still showing like fully charged. And that wasn't a complete shock because um, having been on my friend's boat, black fishing for you know, five or six hours, yeah, it really doesn't wear the batteries down very much. Oh, look at all the chum. Boy. Wow. Man, that's like a personal best porgy. Holy crap. Yeah, so the, the chum comment. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was catching, catching, and then, oh, boy, this is a really big one. Um, and then I would put down and didn't get hit right away. And then what happened was I caught a couple of sea robins in a row after, like, you know, even having to wait a little bit for a bite. Because normally you're putting down and boom, you know, you've got a fish. So I decided, hey, the chum must have run out. So I changed the chum pot just before this fish. So the chum pot just went down with a fresh dose of chum and um, that first fish just can, you know, was just loaded, was spitting it up all over the place. So uh, yeah, they get a hold of it pretty fast. And what I noticed was this was like my best bite of larger porgies was probably the 30 minutes or so after I had changed it off of that first chum block, uh, I ri really got into a nice bite of the larger porgies. And what you heard in the background there was an arriving party boat 
announcing all the regulations. And yeah, there's a nine inch limit on, on these. Hey, this one was probably close to double that. So uh, yeah, nine inches would definitely be no problem. You can keep 30. I just kept a couple for a fresh meal. Uh, I really didn't want to keep a lot of these. You know what? There's other stuff down here besides porgies, and now you're going to get to see a couple of those. Uh, you saw the pinfish. That's a real oddball. But uh, there are a couple of other surprises here on this trip. And here comes the first one. And yes, that's a mackerel. Uh, there seems to be a fair number of those in the bay this spring. So it's... Um, yeah, I haven't caught too many of them, but uh, yeah, I had one other one on this trip that got off, and it's the first one that landed in the boat. Okay, I'm going to leave you with a nice-sized sea bass. Uh, and, yeah, I think I had like four or five this trip, and this one, definitely a nice one, and uh, most of what I caught would have been long enough to keep, but they're out of season, so they all need to go back. Um, I would encourage you to check out my new online fluke fishing course, and you can find that at saltstrong.com slash skinner. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. This is big whatever it is. Yep. That's a beauty.